Hello everybody, I am E. Krishnara Patru. Today, I will deal with one important concept that is how to handle file in Java. So, file handling concept is one important concept in Java. Today, we will discuss. In Java, with help of a class called file class, we can work with files. Using file class, you can deal with file. The class file is inside a package called IO package. So, all file handling related classes are available under IO package. And remember the name of the class is file. This class you have to use to create a file. The file class can be used by creating object of the class and then specifying name of the file. So, you have to specify a name for the file. Using that name, it will create an object. Why file handling is required? So, for every data, if you want to store in a non-volatile area, there you need the file concept. So, file handling is an integral part of any programming language. As file handling enables us to store the output of any particular program in a file and allow us to perform certain operation on it. So, whenever I say file handling, always two things you have to remember. One is reading the content from file. Second is writing data to a file. So, file handling means reading as well as writing. Both are the two standard operations. So, how to perform these operations? Those things we will discuss. See, the first simple program, first we will see how to create a file object. So, to create file object, you have to use a class called file class. And these class are available in a special package called IO package. So, first statement is import java dot util dot sorry java dot io dot file now here this class having a one constructor which takes one parameter that is name of the file once you pass the name of the file then with that name it will create a object then this object is the representation of my file dot txt this particular file will be created automatically in your system where in your current directory wherever this file is there the name of the file is what file demo dot java now this is available in a particular directory in that directory this my file dot txt will be created so automatically file created message will be displayed now once the file is created then you can do some operation what operation input and output operation i think i told in the previous session there are two types of streams, byte stream as well as character streams. So, you can choose either byte stream or you can choose character stream. Using byte stream, you can write byte by byte. Using character stream, you can write character by character. So, please remember, for file handling, you have to choose one of the stream. What are the two stream? One is byte stream. Second is character stream. Generally, for text to file, we will be preferring character stream. Whereas, in the case of audio file, video file, as well as image file, there you need byte stream. But in general, we will use character stream for text file. So, for text to file, character stream is better one. Now, we will see what are the operations we can do on file. Generally, when I say file, you can do multiple operations. You can check whether file is readable or not. You can check whether file is writable or not. So, this particular method, when you use with your file object, it will return a boolean value, true or false. Similarly, it will check whether file is writable or not. So, that means it returns a boolean value. And create a new file, it will create a new file for you. Then returns true or false. You can delete a particular file. Then it will check whether the file exists or not, then length, it will check length of the file in terms of bytes. Similarly, get name for the file object, there is a name associated, that name you can get it. That comes in terms of string format. Similarly, you can display the list of files in a particular directory. So, you sometime you may be interested to know what are the files available in a directory. That means here directory also treated as one type of file. So, it is a directory file. In that, what are the subfiles are there? 
those things you can find out through list methods and you can create one separate directory through mkda and where the files are available in which location you want to know the exact location absolute path so you can get the absolute path through this method get absolute path so these are the various methods are available under a class called file class so remember the class name is file under the file class these are the methods are there you can use these methods to check whether the file exists whether the file is readable file is writable or what are the list of files available in a directory those things you can do a simple example i have given here import java.io.file that means i have imported the file then i have created a new file called example.txt this file is created and my object is file here i am checking whether file exists or not yes created means if at all file object is created it will say true returns true value if file is not there it will return false so it exists true now this method get absolute path that means where this file is created whether it is created in a d drive or f drive or c drive in our whichever location that value is there that file is there that file's location will be stored here in the absolute path and what is the name of the file whether file name is now in this example the file name is example.txt this file name will be stored in the file name okay now which is the parent directory because for every file there is a parent so you can print the parent file you can print the path you can print the name so these are the various operations are applied means you can do on file object you can print the parent directory okay now whether it is a file or not is it a file or is it a directory if it is a file returns true if it is not a file then it returns false sometime you may check whether it is a directory or file if it is a directory it returns true if it is a file it returns false so you can check whether directory or not is file is directory and you can create a new file you can rename also for renaming there is a method called rename this rename will allow you to change the exist name get name will give you the name of the file what is the name of the file and you can delete a file sometime you may be interested to delete the file so you can call the delete method so if it is deleted it returns true if it is not deleted it returns false similarly if it is a directory now you can print the list of files available in the directory also as you may have given dot so remember i have given dot dot means what dot means current directory dot means current directory and please remember for every directory there are two thing one is dot single dot double dot double dot is parent directory parent directory so now in the current directory what files are there i want to know so for that i have written this line three lines please observe my directory new file within the whole code single dot that means i want to know what files are there in the current directory so i give in the dot then in the current directory what are the list of the files are there for that list file there is a method called list files that will return array of files so it will return the array of files files in the directory now from this directory then that means from the array i want to get one by one so all are the files so display the file name whatever the files are there in the current directory that will display okay so now these are the various methods available here so these are the methods are applicable to which object file object this file class is available under sorry under io package now we will see what are the different file opening modes how files can be opened file can be generally opened in three modes read mode write mode and append mode read mode means only you can read write mode means only you can write append mode means you can write at the end of the existing file so in read mode you can read 
read from existing file. If file already exists, you can read it. Write mode means it will create a new file. Create a new file to write. Append mode means write to the existing file. If file already exists, if you want to write something, then go for append. Append means insert at the end. Insert at the end. It's called append. Please listen. For file handling, you can use either byte stream or you can use character stream. For byte stream, for reading purpose, there are two classes. One is file input stream, which is basically for reading the data from the byte stream. And file reader, basically useful for to read character file. Okay? Used for reading character data file. This is byte. Now, you can create an object of file input stream and you can pass the name of the file example.txt once you pass then the object will be created if the file is not there then it will throw exception similarly file reader new file reader followed by name so you can pass so this is the way you can open a file through this class so this is for reading purpose similarly for writing purpose you can use either file output stream or file writer File output stream is basically useful for writing the data in a writing binary data because that will write in a byte by byte. Similarly, file writer it is useful to write character by character to the file. This is my object of file output stream, and we are passing this data automatically. The file output stream object will be created. Similarly, file writer. It is my object with this name. So this is the syntax for writing. Whereas for append, it is also almost equivalent to write only. But there is a small difference. While creating the file, you should pass comma new. Once you write, sorry, once you write true, then the file is open for append mode. Now my file output stream object is ready. Similarly, for character stream also, you can open in append mode by writing true parameter. So, in the constructor, if you pass file name followed by true, then automatically that object will allow you to append. Fine. So, please remember, for uh, file opening the three modes, read mode, write mode and append mode. Now, I am having a, a class called file writer example. I want to write some data to the file using file writer. That means I want to use char strip, character strip. File writer, my object, followed by new, the file path where the file has to be created. The file path I have given here. That means in the current directory. It will be create the file in the current directory or current folder. After creating the file writer object, then I am writing hello file letter, new line, hello, this is an example. And that means these two lines are written to the file. Automatically, one file will be created. The name of the file is example.txt. This file will be created. And hello, hello, comma, file writer. That will return to the file. Then Again, one more new line is here. Control comes here. After coming here, again you are writing. This is an example. This is an example. Automatically, these two lines will be written to the file. What is the name of the file? Example.txt. Then, we are printing on the screen. Data written to the file. So, automatically, this file is closed. If at all any error is there, if at all you are not able to create a file, then it will throw exception. Once exception comes, you would catch it. 
and you should remember one more thing whenever you are doing any IO related programs that means input and output related programs always you would write in a try block write in a try block the try block should followed by cats so this cats block will activate only if there is an error in the try block if there is no error then the cats block will never work ok so this is a, a simple example for writing to a character file means character stream similarly whatever the data you are writing to this file I want to read it so I wrote a small file called file reader example this file reader example it will try to read from the file so now my example.txt which what I have mentioned in the previous example this is my file in this file what I wrote follow file writer this is an example these two lines are there in my file now these two lines I want to read through my program so now using file reader I am reading I have mentioned the file this file reader what I will do I will read through buffer reader again file reader I am linking with buffer reader so I am passing that file reader to buffer reader so that means the buffered reader I am linking with my file reader file reader is reading from my hard disk from hard disk it comes to here from here it comes to buffered reader this buffered reader will allow you to read line by line so I can read line by line how many lines are there? maybe two line or maybe three line or maybe multiple lines so whenever you want to read line by line then always use a loop always use a loop so using this buffer reader object I want to read line by line there is a method called read line read the line print it read the line print it read the line print it when you reach end of the file then you cannot read that time it returns a null value so this read line method will return null value if you reach end of the file Whenever null comes, the loop will stop. Loop will stop. So this is the way it works. If at all any error comes, then the control will come to catch block. So the program is more stable. So this is the way file reader works. Similarly, there is one more example file append. How to append the data? Where you want to append? To the same file. To the example.txt. In example.txt, already you have written two lines. In addition to these two, I want to write one more line. This is a new line. A new data append to the file. This line I want to write. So, first of all, what I have to do? I have to open the file using file writer with true parameter. Once you write true, it says that it is ready to append. That means it is ready to insert at the end. If you are not writing true, what will happen? If you are not writing true, in that case, the whole content will be erased. That means, when you open in the only writing mode, whole data will be erased. Whereas you open in append mode, the data will not be erased. That will be there only. Whole data will be there plus new data will be written at the end. Now, file writer, new data. The new data is my this data. This is written to the file. Then close. So this is the way the writing works. This is for what? Appending purpose. You can do read present you can do write present or you can do append present on the file so reading purpose file reader writing purpose file writer append purpose file writer with true parameter these are the three standard methods are there here now I will show you before the this concept I want to show how you can do this program in a system. I will stop here. I will go to my notepad. That means I want to show how it works. Import. Now my goal is what? Read. Hello. And print read now first you write it write hello 
write and then read the data. Read the content. So I want to write something at the same time I want to read also. So for that how to do for this first of all I have to import it import java dot iowa dot star okay then class rewrite file now I will write my main method public static void main string arguments array now in this file my file name let me give file name is a string type string file underscore name is hello txt name of the file is hello dot txt now this file I want to create because this file is not there in my system I want to create it so how to create if you want to create a new file always you have to use file writer file writer is a built in class and for that class I am creating an object called fw this object I will initialize to initialize new followed by file writer here I should give the file name now once you give this file name then it will create hello.txt in your current directory in your current directory Now, to this file, I want to write for hello, I am putting in black class and hello Java. That means I want to write it to line followed by new line. Here, automatically, that two lines will be written to the file. Now, for betterment I will say fw dot close. I am closing the file. Generally, at the end of the your operation, you should do closing operation. Next, file reader. File reader, fr, fr is my object. New, file reader, followed by the file name. Whatever the name I am using, same file I am using. Whatever the name I have given for the writing, same file name I am using for reading. Once the file is opened, now what I will do? I will read it. How many lines are there? That I don't know. So I will put a loop and get it. This file reader, because I want to read line by line, if you want to read line by line, better you link the file reader with the buffer reader. So Buffer reader br in my object equal to new buffer reader with fr. That means the file I am linking with buffer reader so that from hard disk the data will come to my buffer. Buffer is part of my RAM. From that RAM, I can fetch the data very fast. So, to make your processing very fast, always use buffer reader. Now I will put a loop br dot read line. I am getting line by line. Assume I am defining a string called line. String line. This is my object. Line equal to br dot read line. So if I write this statement, it will read the first line and store it. Now after reading this first line, then that means true, it will go inside, print it, system dot, out dot, print ln, the line. Now, how long I will read? Because I have to read first line, second line, third line, till last line. So when you reach last line, it will return null value. So here I will check whether it is a null or not. If it is not equal to null, Repeat. If it is equal to null, stop the loop. So automatically, whenever equal to null comes, this loop will stop. 
now close br dot close now see how it works control c control s control v dot java then go to the command mode open the information java c my name of the program is read write read write file dot java now there is error unreported exception that means what i told you when you are doing the io related operations always you have to keep in a try block because there is a chance of runtime error so to avoid runtime error you have to keep in a try block so always put these thing in a try block try entire thing till last this is the general thing you should remember then catch exception e if at all any error comes it will come here exception means what runtime error the other name of exception is runtime error then print it system dot out dot print ln e automatically my error object will be printed why that error has come now let us run go to command prompt clear the screen java c read write yeah now no error because i have included all the statement in a try block if at all any error comes now the catch block is ready to catch those errors now java read write file yeah now the two line has come hello as well as java because whatever the file you written now my file name is hello.txt hello.txt yes now hello and java both are there in my program these two line you are able to read it for example i am write two more lines okay fine control s now two lines are there now if i run java that you have to sorry this is file because when i am running the program what happens it is writing only these two lines now in addition to this back class n okay slash n new line and fine control s these four lines i have written that means first line hello second line java third line okay fourth line fine back class n means what new line it goes to next line now i will compile it yeah now it has come all the four lines has come now if i open hello.txt these four lines will be there yes so this is the way you can do read and write operation on the file this is in addition to this whatever the data is there i want to write what for example i want to write bye bye these two line i want to write to the existing file so in that case what i have to do i will write true T R U E. If I write true, automatically now this file is open in append mode. So please remember, this is now open in append mode. Append mode. Now, bye bye. Okay. Go to the command prompt. Compile it. Yes. Run. Now, did you observe? Even by fine. Bye bye. now this line has to come to next line so if you want to bring to next line put a backslash n new line control s bye bye to that file bye bye is there again i want to bye bye compile yeah 
Now this value has come next line because of my new line. Now if we open this hello.txt, yeah, now it has this is the nature of append mode. Is it okay? So this is the way the file handling programs you have to do. So but sometimes you may be interested to write dynamically. In that case, instead of writing, make it fix. You can read from keyboard and write it also. For that, dynamically you want to read. Then import java dot util dot star. Now string sum s. Now here I'll use scanner sc equal to new scanner system dot in. I got sc. Now here I'll print a message system dot out dot printer and enter string. Some string I want it. Now sc equal to sc dot next line. Here I want read some messages. Whatever the message I am reading, that message I want to write. So I want to write in addition to new line plus s. New line with s I want to write. So that that will be written. Now let us see how it works. I want to append. Let's compile it. Yes, compile. Clear the screen. Java rewrite file. Not asking enter a string. This is my append line. Assume I want to write enter. Yeah. Now this line is written to my file. Now let us check hello.txt. If I write hello.txt, yeah, this is my Apple line which is written at the end. So you can read the data from keyboard and append also. So dynamically it is also possible. Now let us see another one to this part already you have seen. Now there is one more important concept you should understand what is serialization and what is deserialization. This concept is very much essential for everybody because you are going to store some object in a file. If you want to store object in a non-volatile area, it requires serialization concept. Similarly, whenever you want to retrieve the object from the non-volatile area, you need deserialization. So, serialization and deserialization is the two important concept you should know. So, please understand, serialization is a process of converting object state into byte stream and allowing it to easily store and transmitted or reconstructed later. Whatever data you are writing, object data to a non-volatile area, later on I should have to retrieve it also. Then that process is called serialization. So serialization is the process of converting object state into binary stream. Convert into binary stream and then store it and transmit it as well as reconstruct later. Generally where you have to store in a non-volatile area, non-volatile area. Okay. The main purpose of serialization is to save the state of object in a way that that can be easily reconstructed either locally or remotely. So objects also you can deal directly. You can store the object, you can retrieve the object. Generally, we are storing primitive data in a file, but you can store a non-primitive data also. So, whenever you are dealing with a non-primitive data, better go for serialization process. So, if the object is serialized object, then you can store it. If the object is not a serialized, you cannot store. So, object should be serialized one if you want to store in a non-volatile area. 
the reverse process that means when the white stream is used to recreate the object is called deserialization the opposite, opposite of serialization is deserialization serialization means storing the object deserialization means retrieving the object so for that java supports two important classes object input stream and object output stream in java are used for serialization deserialization object input stream basically useful for serialization and object output stream is for deserialization okay now we'll see one object student object store student object in a file so this required serialization so to do serialization there is a built in class called serializable there is a built in class called serializable if the object is serialized one then you can store in a file assume my goal is store student data roll number name the roll number and name i want to create an object roll number and name and store this object into a file into a file this is my file this object you have to store it. first object second object third object for like this in the object roll number name roll number name roll number name roll number name so that means you want to keep the complete status of the object into a file so define roll number and define name so now this is my a bean this bean having one constructor with the parameter roll number and name and my roll number names are assigned this value and then i am having a method called to string method which will allow you to print the object so print roll number with name name with name so automatically this information will be printed whenever i am printing the object so this is a bean what is this bean this bean i want to write into the file so to write into a file you need a concept called serializable there is a built in interface called serializable interface serializable is a interface which allows you to store the object into a file so do please implement the serializable interface this serializable interface is a part of io package io package once it is serialized one then you can store if it is not serialized you cannot store now let us have a small example student storage example now i am having a list of student krishna ramya and suresh i am having a list already you know your collection class called list in list i want to store multiple student new array list i created one array list in the array list i am adding add one object of student type an object of student type how many object three object the first student is krishna second is ramya third is suresh and roll number is 101 102 103 so i have created three object first object second object third object here first object is 101 krishna second object is 102 ramya third object is 103 suresh three objects are there these three objects are available in a list in a list first now this list i want to store in a file so for that i am calling a method called serialize students serialize you know, students is a main method this method will take the student list as a parameter so i am passing the student list as a parameter then it will write it to the file after that deserialization that means i have to get back for that i am calling a method called deserialize these are my user defined methods this is user defined method similarly this also user defined methods user defined methods this is also user defined methods after retrieving the data from the file you can print it deserialize students is my list then print one by one this loop will print one by one so this example what it doing it is storing set of student data into a file now how to write the 
serialization shown. This is my method. This method you are calling that in the main method. So to write the object to the file, you have to depend on a built-in class called object output stream. This object output stream will allow you to write the data. So new object output stream followed by that will be depending upon the file output stream. So it will allow you to write. I have written a name called student.ser means serialize. You can give of course any name, but here again dot ser. This is the file will be created in the hard disk. Now OS is my object dot write object. Then automatically this object will be created. Which object? Whatever the object you have passed means a list. This student in the student list you are having already three things. Already I have mentioned Krishna, Ramya, Surya. These three object I am passing as a parameter because here we are passing student list. This student list has gone to that method. This is my student list. This list I am writing. Write objects. Students. Okay. Whatever the student you have passed, that is it. So students are stored, serialized. That means it is stored in this file. Then, if at all it is not able to store, then catch it. Where you are calling? You are calling the main method. That's where you have to static. Next, deserialization. Deserialization, what it will do? It will return the file. So when you call deserialization, then you have to return the array list. So for that, you need a file called object input stream. This is the main class which will read object by object. So use object input stream. This object input stream will link with file input stream. The file input stream is reading your student set. After that, this object is ready. Now it is ready to read. So read object. Then that will give you the list. Because you have written the file, then you are reading the object. Now I got my list. This list I will successfully deserialize. Okay. After getting the list, then you can print it. And finally, whatever the object you written, return the students. The student is what? It is my list of students. So this is the way you can do serialization as well as deserialization. So remember, serialization and deserialization are the two important processes for storing object as well as for retrieving object. For this, the two important classes are object input stream and object output stream. Object input stream. This is for reading object. Similarly, object Output stream, object output stream for writing purpose, object output stream for writing purpose. These two are important classes available in IO package. So, and there are some more important concepts you should know also. Data input stream and data. Output stream. It provides method for reading and writing primitive data type. So please remember these are the two important classes available in IO package. Available in IO package. Basically, these two classes are useful to read and write your primitive data directly, which is working in a machine independent way. They are often used to perform low-level IO operation with binary data. So whenever you want to do low-level operation, you can use data input stream and data output stream. Generally, data input stream for reading purpose, data output stream for writing purpose. So, whenever you want to read or write primitive data, primitive data means what? Integer, double, boolean, character, float, bo means int, char, float, long, short this kind of data you can write directly with the help of input stream and output stream data output stream is a class in java that provides 
methods to write room to data. Similar data input stream is a class that provides method to read room to data from the input stream. So whenever you are dealing with the primitive data types, then always go for data input stream and output stream. Let us have a small example how to write the primitive data to a file. So you can create a file output stream because you have to write the data in a byte stream and to a file called example.dat. Of course, this name you can give anything. Then the data output stream is linking with my file output stream. That means data output stream is writing to the file in which format? In byte stream format. Now, I want to write first integer 42, then I want to write double 3.14 and I want to write boolean 2, then I want to write one message also, hello data stream. If you want to write a string, you have to use a method called write utf. Okay, write int which allow to read it, write integer, write double for writing double purpose, write boolean, write boolean. Similarly, if you want to write long, Right long. So for every primitive data, you will find respective methods to write. Then close it. If at all any error comes, then comes to catch block. So in the catch block, it will print the why that error has come. It will trace it. So this is the way you can use data output stream. Similarly, data input stream. Data input stream is what? To read data. Whenever you want to read. Which data? Primitive data. So you can use this same file. Whatever the file you have given. In the previous session. Means in the previous slide. I have given example.dat. Same file I will use. Example.dat only. That file I am opening. Using file input stream. This file input stream I am linking with. My data input stream. The data input stream object FIS. I am linking here FIS. Now. Using this data input stream object, I am reading read integer, read double, read boolean, read utf. That means if the file is already written in the data output stream, if the file is written using data output stream, then you have to read using data input stream. So these two are interlinked. If at all you have written using data output stream, then you can use data input stream, otherwise no. So, for to coincide, better use data input stream. If at all, the file is written using data output stream. Now, I am reading integer, double, boolean, now string. String means read utf. If you see the previous slide, integer, double, boolean, utf. See, same format. The order in which way you written, same order you would read it. After reading these data, I am printing on the screen. Int value, double value, boolean value, string value. Automatically, the values will be printed on the screen. If at all any errors are there, it will throw exception, then catch it. So, this way, the data output stream works. So, data input stream works. Thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.